Isn't it so weird that our friends are getting married? Yeah. How do you feel about that? I hated happy tears. I, I didn't understand it. It bothered me. Like, why are you crying? The older I get, the more sensitive and emotional I get. It's so weird. The fact that he was standing and staring at you guys while you were just so doing that is so creepy. That's where the line goes and completely. And we all felt so uncomfortable and so creeped out. And honestly, like it brings us to like what everyone is talking about lately, bear versus man. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I would choose a bear. Have you ever felt unsafe in Cyprus by walking? But people must not really walk here. A lot of this stuff stems from family. Mm -hmm. So it's all about how boys were raised yeah. to treat women. Yeah. Not everyone is lucky to be raised in a healthy family with the right values. Mm. Oh my God. Where's the, the respect for women? You know, we are the ones who raised, who gave birth to you men. You're alive because of women. I forgot how we start our episodes. <laughs> Hi, Maria. <laughs> Hi, Olivia. <laughs> Is this... Welcome back to Cyprus. Thank you. By the way, I feel like in also in every episode, we're like, how are we going to start? Yeah. Let's say this. We need to find a better way to say it. So it's, this... We haven't done this in a while, to be fair. Yeah. We have so, been out of studio for two months. Yeah. So for those of you who watch us <laughs> weekly, mm -hmm. um, you know that we've pre-film some of the episodes yeah should we talk about that yeah of course of course i mean people understand I mean, that i'm not in cyprus it's not a secret but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no no actually we meet up every single day <laughs> every single week <laughs> once a week she yeah. flies in for a day <laughs> oh my god that, that would be crazy so part of the episodes are, are filmed in real time yeah but a part of them are <laughs> wait a part of them like almost all of them <laughs> apart from a few no i mean a few of them were filmed in real time yeah and also this one will kind of be filmed in real, in time. real time. Yeah, true. But a lot of them are pre-recorded because you live in Mallorca, mm -hmm. as some people may know. <laughs> yeah, by now. So, uh, and also I, I, forgot, I forgot my train of thought. Shit. It's fine, but I... <laughs> <laughs> and we said that I'm not oh, the point was how rusty we are we haven't done this in a while yeah. how, how do you feel do you feel like a little bit awkward or do you yeah feel it's weird I got unused to this yeah, I'm like like in what the I, I don't I don't height and yeah should I have the microphone and yeah. how should I speak I'm really confused <laughs> so we haven't done this in a while and also you and I have not even uh, I mean met because obviously I've been no. abroad so oh. this is our first interaction this is our first apart from like the one, one hour we were talking before yeah now. but Oh my god, it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's weird. <laughs> By the way, I came from Amsterdam. Are we not gonna say? What? Say what? We need to introduce the oh. <laughs> True. True. Like, okay, so you can say your name first. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maria and I am an alcoholic. No. <laughs> I'm really not, I don't drink, but no. um You like to talk, talk I, the I mean I mean <laughs> just disclaimer. Yeah. That was a joke. Uh, <laughs> You're Maria. Say also your last name. Hi, my name is Maria Gojkovic. Hi. And oh, yeah. You want to say something This more? is <laughs> Olivia Kostandinidis. And we're here for Ice Latte Girls. Yes. For another week <laughs> of Ice Latte Girls. This is so weird. Does it feel weird being back in Cyprus? Honestly, no, because I was here two, two months ago. It's actually the feeling how I am now, how I want to feel whenever I come to Cyprus. I, oh, mm. It's always like too long and I'm like starting to feel like I want to do everything and mm. I don't have time. So it's actually the first time I'm here when I'm actually it's like It's a good relaxed. thing we're doing the podcast and you can come more often. Exactly, girl. Exactly. By the <laughs> way, I came directly from Amsterdam, coming back to... Um, and I want to say something so you can understand how busy my mind has been the, the, lately. This is a story. I actually even asked the, the persons if I can even say their names because I realized I want to mention their names also. Oh. So while we were in Amsterdam, we, we were there for like just four, four days because uh, uh, Ramon's brother's wife gave birth to a little girl. You are, already know this, yeah. of course, because we spoke. But uh, because we were meeting so many people, we literally had zero time to like just sit and just like do nothing, let's say. Yeah. It was very hectic. On the last night, we went to his oldest brother's house they had rented they rented a new house very beautiful so we went there to see it uh, with his wife and we were sitting on the couch and we, you have no idea where this story is going but this is just <laughs> like a proof like how my mind has been and uh, we were like talking like they asked us like how is Mallorca and I started to share like my normal template yeah Mallorca is beautiful and it's uh, there's a lot of things to do like you know they have a beach in the mountains and I was like starting to describe Mallorca but they have been they were like uh, we have been to Mallorca like we know, 
And I was like looking at them like, ha yeah, you know, yeah, right. Like good, good joke. I didn't understand. I didn't connect. <laughs> and they're like, no, Olivia, but we were there. I'm like, huh? And the funny thing is when they said that they, they had been there, it took me like a good 10 seconds for me to understand like Ruben is his older brother and Nayeli, his wife had been there. And I was like, yeah, 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 it's true. You've been there. But I still did not remember. God, that was so embarrassing. I was sitting there with his brother and his wife and I did not remember that they had been there like literally four months ago. And they visited you. Yes, not only they had been there, let's clarify. Exactly. They, visited they stayed travel, with good you. Point. Exactly. They stay, <laughs> no, they didn't stay with us, but they came for like Christmas. We spent Christmas together. Like my mom was also there. And I forgot completely. So that was, uh, I think that was very scary because I was you like- You need a vacation. I was like, is that how dementia feels like? You know, like this, <laughs> honestly, it was insane. So yeah. Uh, that's what I want to say about Amsterdam. I, my mind has been everywhere. You know, it gives me the vibes of when you like are in your room and you want to go get a glass of water or like do something and you walk out of your room and you're like, where was I going? Yeah. And you freeze for a second and you go back and you trace your steps back. And it happens to me sometimes like exactly. I completely blank out because my mind is going like too fast yeah, for me to keep up with. And I can't remember what I was yeah, doing. Man, it's really it's, bad. It's such an error. Honestly. Oh my God, you know what else happened to me recently? Whoa. I went up to the house yeah, and I go like this with my car key and I'm like, why isn't it opening? No, and I'm like really getting annoyed and frustrated and I keep clicking and clicking. And then I look at myself and I'm like, oh my God, what were you, you need holding? sleep. What were you holding? My car key going, trying to unlock it with the button of the car key. Wait, I did not, I did not get it. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 what do you mean? You were trying to unlock the car? With the car? No, 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 the house. With oh, the car. I missed that detail. Oh my God, girl. And I was getting frustrated that the door wasn't like magically opening and it wasn't unlocking. And I was like, with the car key. Girl. And I was like, oh my God, I really need sleep. Oh girl. Like this is, this is not normal. No, man. Oh my God. Has something like that never happened to you? Yeah, but it's mostly like, you know, talking on your phone. It's like, where's my phone? You get this <laughs> slight panic. But that is like even like crazy because you try to open up the house with the car <laughs> key. <laughs> and I'm getting angry. Oh I'm like, God. why aren't you opening? What's wrong with it? Why isn't it working? Girl, you need to sleep more. <laughs> yeah. <Aww. laughs> well, no, so that, that's, that's a little sneak. A snippet? What do you say? A snippet of your life. <laughs> That's a little snippet of your life. <laughs> That's a, snip, a little snippet of how tired I have, yeah. I've been lately. Yeah. So you were in Amsterdam with uh, yeah. the family. I was in the Amsterdam family. That was the only funny thing in, in that sense. I was like, whoa, ho, ha oh my God, that sounds so bad. What do you mean it's the only funny thing? It was, uh, Amsterdam is beautiful, okay? <laughs> Amsterdam is actually one. That was so bad. <laughs> Why did I say that? Um, uh, Amsterdam is always nice to come, go back to Amsterdam because it's, it's such a beautiful city and you have not been yet. And I really, I have not. I'm so curious to see what you would think about Amsterdam, especially you, because it's so different from like, Cyprus. Or I really do want to visit Amsterdam. It's just never been the right time. And honestly, like I was discussing recently with some friends how Cyprus is an amazing base to live. Mm -hmm. But if you live in Cyprus, the secret to a happy life here is traveling often. Yes. But oh. flights are so difficult and complicated. Mm. Like me to get to Mallorca to visit you, I need to take like either one connection or two connections. And if you're lucky and only if you're, if you're, if you're flexible also with the days. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to take me at least 12 hours to yeah. reach Mallorca. I know. Whereas if I'm going to come, realistically speaking, I have to take days off of work. Yeah. If I need 12 hours to get there and 12 hours to come back, that's 24 hours. That's an extra day. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to travel for 12 hours to go for two days. No. It's, it's honestly so two it's days of chaotic. traveling. Yeah. It's, it's really chaotic and it's really difficult. So it's with Amsterdam, I, whenever I was like had free days and wanted to travel, mm -hmm. I just never found flexible, good decently priced flights yeah I, I it, it's I've true, just man. have not been lucky with the timing and there is some good flights to Amsterdam but yeah. and honestly you're not with Limassol so you're like literally in between Larnaca airport and Bavos airport yeah. and Bavos has cheaper options but it's yeah. again as you said if you're flexible 
So I understand that. I hope some some sometime we can go together when Ramon has his duties to do in Amsterdam because yeah. I'm, I'm alone there, you're, for example. And, and you've been so many times, you're like semi-local. Yeah, exactly. And b- by the way, with semi-local, I want to ra- say like a little bit of like tips and recommendations I Ooh. have at Amsterdam from like a local, sp- local perspective. Not necessarily like... Um, like like going to bars and stuff because we don't go to bars. So I'm gonna ra- write uh, write up. Lol. I'm gonna write up. Uh, what is it called? I'm gonna say <laughs> some recommend share some recommendations. Write up. I'm gonna write up. And oh, that was so millennial of you. Like if younger people hear you like say something wrong and then go lol. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and we also mentioned it in the, in the previous episode almost about that. Oh, we're so old. Oh my God. When we lol I'm at ourselves. I'm millennial and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I'm a millennial too. Yeah. Technically, I'm Gen Z on paper, but I'm so millennial. Yeah, that's true actually. You're in the in between. We actually also talked about this in like episode yeah. that came out two weeks ago, or three or whatever. I lost count. So here are like the things that I like to do in Amsterdam whenever I go there. Okay. Okay. Mm, and keep in mind, these are like not touristic Typical touristic attractions, something like that. Which is my favorite things to do on holiday. Like, do things the locals do. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also, like, I have, they have not even done the touristic attraction themselves. So, like, for example, Ramon, I'm like, oh, have you done this? He's like, no. It's like, literally <laughs> for tourists almost. That's, that's interesting. But that's not what I'm going to say now. So, the first thing that I really enjoy doing is to walk around the Amstel River. It's the biggest okay. river, I think, in Amsterdam. And it's gigantic. And that's also where, for example, Negin Mirazeli goes Negin Mirzaleji. Bravo, I cannot pronounce I, her name. I think that's her name. Yeah, she goes around there with, with walk with her dog. And Ramon has seen her and her mm. husband. So that's crazy. But anyway, because around the canal, uh, canal there has also a lot of smaller canals. And it's beautiful. Also for like, if you like to take pictures, it's like the perfect place to take pictures. Okay. So take a walk around the Amstel is my first tip. And then the second is regardless if you're vegan or not, to eat at the vegan sushi bar. Mm. Girl, when I'm telling you, it is the best sushi vegan I've eaten in my life. It is so okay. good that even Ramon's two closest friends go there who are not vegan and eat there like regularly. Like they've been What's there. in the sushi? It's... um. Like they have, for example, salmon, which is not salmon. So it is like, yeah, but I think it's made of like watermelon. I, I actually don't know what it's made of. I'm, I'm okay, but you. there is like replacements for yes. the fish in sushi. Exactly. Like, okay. Exactly. And and it's even made with purple rice. So it's, re- it's really, really cool. It's a little bit pricey, but it's worth it. And I highly recommend you eat the shrimpless, uh, wait, I even wrote that, so don't forget, the shrimpless tempura and the fried California rolls. Those mm. two are the Ah, so good. You will thank me. You will text me and say okay. like, Olivia, wow. The third one is uh, to chill, to chill, chill at one of their parks. But To the, chill? Yeah, to What's sh- wrong with you today? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've been speaking like Swedish and uh, pretending to speak Dutch and I forgot how to speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To, so to chill? To, where? To chill <laughs> at the... Uh, at Oster Park, which is the park on the okay. east. People usually tend to go to Fondel Park, which is like the biggest park, but Oster Park is really beautiful and it's close to the Amstel. And it's just take a picnic, go there, chill in the sun if you're lucky, <laughs> unless maybe it's not so fun to go there if it's not good weather. So those are actually like my four or three recommendations. Is the weather generally good there? Uh, depends who you ask. If you ask me, no. <laughs> That's why I'm asking yes. you because we have very high standards here in yes. Cyprus. <laughs> like if you like the, if you like wind and rain and like the unpredicted unpredictability, <laughs> predictability <laughs> exactly, then you will enjoy it. Uh, but it's beautiful, man. But it's like it's a very like bike culture. So people yeah. also bike in the rain, man. That they're like resistant to rain. You know when it rains, like I'd instantly get sick. My body is not used to that. Yeah, you will be sick the whole time in Amsterdam. Like, you know, Ramon, like when it starts to rain here, uh, he just goes out like with nothing, no umbrella, nothing. Yeah, but also Ramon, when he first came to Cyprus and you guys stayed here for like a couple of months, in the beginning, he used to make fun of us for like taking the two minute car drives and stuff. Yeah. And then he fully adapted within like yes. a month and he was like, oh no, let's take the car. Yeah. And we were making fun of him. Yeah. And in that same way, in the beginning, he was like, oh, it's just a bit of rain. But I, I swear the rain in Cyprus is different. It's bigger droplets, it's heavier rain. So let's say if I'm in London, I can walk through the rain. I won't get soaked. Mm. Also, it's okay. It's like, it's sprinkles. It's like sprinkling. Yeah, it's different vibes. And it's like raining all day, but it's sprinkling. In Cyprus, when it rains, it's like, 
<laughs> I like the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's see. like crazy. You get yeah. soaked. You can't. You can't, you can't yeah. walk in the uh, in the rain. And our roads are not the best. So there's like huge puddles, and mm. the water doesn't drain properly. So you really can't function yeah. when I, it rains. It's true. It's, it's, it's a different. So thing. It, it's not so much about us not wanting. It's just unable to yeah. as well. I, it's, it's a good point. It's a good point of view, honestly. So that's my Amsterdam chapter. I don't have any more recommendations apart from like only food places. Are you going back to Amsterdam? We go there like almost every, like every time we're going to go to a place. You're flying there. directly yeah. to Mallorca it's, it's, when you leave. Oh, you mean now? Yeah. Oh, no, no. We're going to go via Rome, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And you've been there, so yeah. I like Rome. Yeah. I was in Rome um, in January mm -hmm. for a wedding and it was so nice. I realized we never spoke about that here on the podcast about your... Yeah, it's Rome. really weird. You have a wedding. You're in Cyprus actually for a wedding yeah. as well. Isn't it so weird that our friends are getting married? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Weird. My friends are having kids as well. My friends are pregnant. That is so crazy. So weird. Like how, how old? Such a different stage of life for me. Yeah. You know? And you were also bridesmaid on that wedding in Rome. Not really. There wasn't oh. really a... They don't have bridesmaids the way... But you were like the closest of... like Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. it was so weird seeing such a close friend get married. Because uh -huh. I've been to weddings of like more distant mm -hmm. friends that are close in age to me. It hits different when it's like one of your best friends. Yeah. And when it's like one of your best friends also having a baby, it's like... That is also surreal. It's weird. Yeah. And, and you did, did you get emotional like during the wedding? Dude, I cried like a freaking baby. It was embarrassing. That friend, I also went to her brother's wedding mm -hmm. last year. And uh, I cried so much at her brother's wedding. And I'm not very close with him. And I'm not very close with the bride. Yeah. <laughs> and I was bawling. It was me and uh, Svetlana, my friend. Yeah. We were the two people at the wedding crying the most. No. And we weren't even that close. I was just like bawling, bawling. They, tears were just streaming down my face. I've become oh. so emotional with age. But that's beautiful. And like Julia's wedding in Rome, I was like red in the face. All my makeup cried off. All of it. All Whoa. of it. Like I had no makeup anymore on my face. Um, and I was just crying for the whole yeah. ceremony. And it was just... I would look around and her family was crying a little bit. And but you were like, the one I was the like <laughs> lost for air. No. It's really bad. I need to learn to control my emotions. So basically a recommendation then would be like to wear waterproof makeup. I did. <laughs> you did and even the, the makeup went away. Yeah. To be honest, my mascara stayed on. My eyeshadow stayed give us, on. Give us a recommendation of the mascara you're wearing. Maybelline. I actually, whenever I've tried a really expensive luxury mascara, mm -hmm. it doesn't work that well mm -hmm. for me and I always go back to like Maybelline okay okay it's really weird yeah, you, you can send me the photo later and we, we can post it on Instagram yes so we, so can. we can so they can see which one we're talking about so yeah uh, mm. me with weddings I get very 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 emotional no and it, it's weird because like when I was a kid and my mom used to get like emotional at my yeah. graduation or something, I used to get annoyed that she's crying. I, what? When I was younger, I hated happy tears. I, I didn't understand it. It bothered me. Like, why are you crying? Oh. And the older I get, the more sensitive and emotional I get. It's so weird. That is weird. In, in I'm the... becoming like a little mush. Yeah, but don't you feel like it's nice to be able to let go of, of your of your tears like that in in, in like yeah, this beautiful of, moment? Of course, but like tone it down, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really bad. I feel you. I feel like, like I'm also going to be crying like crazy for sure on Saturday. Mm, yeah. I need to buy myself weird. a waterproof mascara. I just realized I don't have one with me. Yeah, you should. Ah, fun. <laughs> I was gonna swear there. It's uh, actually let's mention the hens you went to in Dubai. Yes, it's uh, yeah. Yoda, That's Yoda the wedding is, you're Yoda going is bravo. to. Yoda is getting married on Saturday and uh, gonna be his bridesmaid. I actually bought a second outfit also. Wow! It took me like forever to find one. So that's my best advice is to bring flats with you. Oh, good point, girl. Tip good of point. the tip of the week. Yeah. Um If you're going to a wedding, uh -huh. take. Take sneakers or slippers or something Good extra point. with you. If you really want to have fun and dance and enjoy. I'm really comfortable in heels. We've mentioned that. Yeah. I can run a marathon. After 10 hours, they kind of start hurting any shoes. So it's nice to switch to flats. That's a good point because I actually, I have heels with me that are like comfortable. 
but I also haven't worn yeah. heels in a long time. So I think I'm definitely going to take up your advice. Even the most comfortable shoes, any shoes, when you wear the same shoe for 10, 12 hours and you're standing. I mean, I don't know how long the, you're going to stay at the wedding, but you go early to mm -hmm. the ceremony, at like early afternoon. Yeah. You're in the heels from then. And then you go to the dinner and you stay at the party and then you're dancing. I mean, when I went to my friend's wedding, we were there for like 12, 13 hours standing. Ooh, and you were wearing heels the whole time? Yeah. Girl. I took them off in the last hour. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good, good tip, Maria. Okay. Now we talked enough about me. I want to know, how have you been? What have you done? I have been so busy. Yeah. I'm honestly, that's probably why I'm unlocking the door with my car key. I've been working nonstop. I work full time. Yes. I've been shooting some collaborations. I had a lot of photo shoots lately. And you're taking so, up also social media collabs also now. Yeah, it's just been chaotic. I cannot keep up. Yeah. And because I'm also like not willing to sacrifice my social life. No. And I'm going out. That's good. I'm really like reaching that limit. So I had two big photo shoots this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, one big campaign that's coming out soon. And on uh, Saturday, I had a photo shoot for some yoga mats and weights and stuff, a brand from abroad. Mm -hmm. And I was By doing- By the way, sorry, I saw you and you looked fabulous. Okay, continue. Thank you. Continue. <laughs> I was doing yoga for five hours. That is, that, that is insane. Sorry, continue. I was, that's insane. My body is still in pain. Like you do not understand every muscle hurts because, you know, normally you go, you exercise for one, two hours. That's it. But not only that, and you exercise, you, you also have to look pretty. No, and it was time. not just that. It was just like you when you do yoga, you switch between poses, you do both legs, whatever. Mm. And I had to keep poses for a really long time, but at the same time, like flow between exercises. So I was getting like a proper workout for five hours. It was nuts. And I had sun and wind and sea sand and salt water in my eyes. And it was just really difficult. Oh. And um, we had a yoga instructor on set mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, I'm not making any mistakes because I don't have a mirror. I can't see myself. Mm -hmm. So it was really helpful. And at the end of the photo shoot, she turned around and she's like, oh my God, you're such a trooper. I can't believe you did not complain. I don't know what type of workout you do. You're so in shape. Good for you. That yes. is so impressive. The I was Pilates like, thank you. Off. Thank you, reformer. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, it was a team of girls. We were five girls. Um, no, we were me, the makeup artist, the photographer, and yeah, we were five girls mm -hmm. and it was such a nice environment, girly team. We vibed so well. Mm -hmm. It was great. I haven't had that in a really long time. Yeah, such a nice rare, girly right? team. To have a yeah. full women team. Yeah. Wow. So it was amazing. But we were at Governor's Beach, which is like the white rocks and it's very secluded. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy there was five of us because actually something happened. Well, so as we're shooting, yeah, a random guy comes up to us and we were like, okay, ignoring, working, shooting. He can see we're working. He mm -hmm. can see we're a team of people. There's so much equipment there. It's public space also. He kept trying yeah. to speak to us. Oh. Um, and he kept speaking in Greek. So the girls were just like, sorry, don't understand. So he starts speaking to me and I was like, sorry, how can I help you mm -hmm. in Greek? And he was, he turns around and he's like, did you know this is a nudist beach? Wait, wh what? It's not by the way. No, right? I turn around, I'm like, no, and I don't care. And he was like, oh, but I come here all the time and this is a nudist beach. Okay. And I looked at him, I was like, okay, good for you. Yeah, like, okay, well, what do you want with your comment? Like, And he turns around, he's like, okay, I'm just letting you know I'm going to take my clothes off now. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? And I Are turned around, I, I did not know what to say to him. I just turned around and I'm like, yo, okay, just don't bother us because we're shooting. You can't be near us. You yeah. can't be in the photos. We're working here. So please, can you move? Yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to go right there and I'm going to take my clothes off. Okay. And I looked at him and I'm like, okay, good for you. I yeah. mean, I, I just stopped interacting. I stopped responding because like, what are you going to say? Yeah, that's awesome. And I don't want to, I don't want to converse with this mm. man. He's creepy. He's weird. So he goes 10 steps further and he takes everything off. No. And he just he stands there also. like this, staring at us for like a good hot minute. And 
we turned around and we felt so uncomfortable. We obviously weren't looking in his direction. We moved a bit further down. And we were thinking like, thank God there's five of us. Yeah, imagine if you because were like- Because it's so known. uncomfortable. Like, why would you do that? There's a whole beach. Go further down, go elsewhere. You're a nudist, you wanna be, do whatever you want. I have no problem. But why are you lingering around five women? That, that's the weird part. So I understand like the freedom of being Good naked. Good for you. Yeah, I, but, I have no problem. But the fact that he was standing and staring at you guys while it you were just so doing that. so creepy. That's where the line goes and completely. And we all felt so uncomfortable and so creeped out. And thank God there was a lot of us because yeah. imagine it was like a smaller production and there was just two girls. Yeah. You would have felt very unsafe. Yeah, man, but also like people go there and do sunbathing, sunbathing or whatever. Yeah, but it's not really the season and there isn't a lot okay. of people. Like imagine it wasn't a photo shoot and we weren't like a big team and it was just me and you that went to the beach yeah. and we experienced that. It's so uncomfortable. It is very, Especially yeah. when they come up to you and interact with you in this creepy way. Yeah, there's a way to do things and that was the not the good way. Yeah. That was the creepy, as you said, the creepy yeah. way. Yeah makes you feel very uncomfortable. It was one of the weirdest things that Man. ever happened to me on set. Why are men like that? I don't know. Honestly, like it brings us to like what everyone is talking about lately, bear versus man. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Like, honestly, I would choose a bear. On a, uh, for people who maybe have not listened, do you, do you care to explain? So basically there's mm. a, a huge trend on TikTok going around where it's mostly women asking their boyfriends or their fathers or their brothers, like um, if your daughter, because the question started with women being asked, if you were stuck in a forest, would you rather be stuck in a forest with a bear mm -hmm. or a man? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and most women choose a bear. Yeah. So then the trend kind of grew and they started asking their husbands and their boyfriends and the men in their lives, if your daughter was stuck in a forest, yeah. would you rather she be stuck with a bear or a man? Yeah. And a lot of men chose a bear. Yeah. So a lot of men are green flags and they understand. Yeah. But that sparked this whole wider conversation of do women feel safer being stuck in a forest with a bear or a man? Mm -hmm. So what would you choose? <laughs> Obviously a man, no joking. <laughs> no, I mean, I cannot even joke about that. A bear, I mean, we. Um, you also I assume, right? I would 100% choose a bear. And uh, some people broke it down based on numbers. Okay. Because we like statistics. Mm -hmm. And they were like, actually, statistically speaking, mm -hmm. this is the population of bears and hikers. Mm. And this is the number of attacks. And this is the general population of men and women, yeah. and this is the number of attacks late at night in streets. So statistically speaking, when they break it down, mm -hmm. you're safer around the bear. Yeah, And that is some scary, scary, scary stats. But what stood out to me even more, Yeah, let's actually ask ChatGPT right now, because I saw someone ask ChatGPT. Oh yeah, it's a good point. Also, it, I, it's interesting to see what you would answer. Okay, so I saw someone do this and I don't know how they formatted their question because they got a much bigger response mm -hmm. properly analyzing it. But I just asked ChatGPT, yeah. if you were a young woman and had to be, uh, and had to choose being stuck in a forest with a bear or a man, what would you choose? And, and the says, response I get is that's quite a unique scenario. If I had to make a choice, I would consider the bear's behavior and the man's character. Generally, a bear might be predictable in terms of wildlife behavior responding to food or territory. A man's behavior could vary greatly depending on his intentions and skills in a survival situation. Either choice comes with significant risks and would ideally involve some strategy for safety and coexistence. Coexistence. Um, I will ask now, you know nothing about the man. In that case, choosing a bear and an unknown man adds layers of unpredictability to the situation, each, present, each presenting its own set of risks. The, ba the bear's behavior might be more predictable based on known wildlife patterns, but it's naturally a dangerous animal. The unknown man could potentially be a helper or a threat. And without any information, it's difficult to gauge the safety in that choice. It would be a tough decision to make, but mm -hmm. a bear is a less unpredictable option. Fuck. Fucking hell, man, that's, that is scary. Like it's confirming like, what, what we already Chat feeling. GPT chooses a bear. That is, ah, uh, 
Yeah. And that actually like gives me goosebumps. Yeah, man. So I don't know, someone else did it on TikTok and they formatted the question because it all has to do with how you ask. Mm -hmm. And they got such a good analysis and it was like going through the statistics and everything. And statistically speaking, you can predict the bear's behavior. There's precautions you can take mm -hmm. not to provoke an animal. Exactly. It's like a little bit on you. It's on, you, you can control the situation mm -hmm. to a certain degree. It's still a wild animal, but at the end of the day with a man, you never know. Yeah. You never know you what never the know. intentions is of, of it, the man. It, it literally has zero dependency mm -hmm. on your behavior or how you're dressed or what you're Doesn't wearing. Doesn't matter, exactly. It, it's not about what you do. Mm -hmm. It's about what their mind, where their mind is at and where their intent lies. Yeah. So when I see men responding to this trend, the men who don't understand, it's like oh, such a red flag. And the men who do understand, like you can see how they feel for us mm. and how they understand the struggles we go through as women and how scary it can be walking through a parking lot at night, holding your keys in your hand sometimes. Yeah. Or pretending to talk on the phone while, while you're walking home in the dark. Which is not normal. No, man. Is has become we normal have normalized for us it as women because it's our everyday yeah. life. Or like I see a man walking on the other side of the road, and you if take especially the next one. if it's especially if it's late at night, I cross over yeah. instantly. Like yeah. it's it's become our nature, our instinct. So even these behaviors, they can't protect you, unfortunately. So it's really nice when men understand, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, you know, when another man steps in, um, it can help. Mm. And I have had situations where I'm uncomfortable with a man bothering me and another guy steps in and I've been so thankful and I'm like, oh my God, you get it. What what, what kind of situation was it? Like I've, I've had the situation where at a club I was being bothered mm -hmm. by a man who wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah. And a guy that didn't even know me stepped in and was like, walk away. Oh, that's nice. And that was just so nice. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like when you talk to a guy and you're like hinting, leave me alone and it with your leave. behavior yeah. and he leaves. I respect that. Oh, you mean, and he leaves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When course. he doesn't leave, it gets creepy. It gets uncomfortable. You feel unsafe mm. to a certain degree. So the men who get it are just such a green flag. Yes. And the men, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's really important that men are aware mm -hmm. of how we feel and how sometimes this behavior can maybe be unintentional and it comes off as creepy. Yeah. And it's because of the way, the way society is and, you know, it's, it, it, our thoughts of how things can go wrong that we may misinterpret some behaviors. Mm -hmm. But if men are aware of what we go through and how we feel, it really helps. Yeah. Because then they can also handle themselves a bit differently. Definitely. And... Uh, I think it's a good filter already to see if a man understands a, a dilemma or not dilemma, what was it called? A hypothesis. A th yeah. Like the scenario like this, then you can already tell like, okay, he's aware, as you said, he understands. But also, do you feel like you can make the person understand? Like what is our responsibility for them to open up their eyes, the men up to like, see like this is what women go through. And what do you feel like they should already know by, by themselves? I mean... Uh a lot of this stuff stems from family. Mm -hmm. So it's all about how boys were raised yeah. to treat women. Yeah. Um, not everyone is lucky to be raised in a healthy family with the right values. Mm. I can't judge someone for the family they were born into or the circumstances they were born into. But nowadays with social media, with so many conversations being opened up, information is so accessible. So as long as you educate yourself mm. about what's happening in the world, like it just takes a little bit of common sense. And also I think you also have to have like empathy, you yeah. know, have some compassion inside of you. And that mm. also I think stems off how maybe you were raised. I don't know the- But that's also reason. like sometimes but, empathy is just, you're born with it, no? Yeah, I believe so too, right? But it's cultivated. Yeah. It's cultivated because if you go through hardships in life, kind of your empathy may die down. Mm. Whereas if you're cultivated to be thought full and to think of other people's feelings it's it's cultivated yeah so it really depends but I think us as women mm. um by opening up these conversations we can help ourselves yeah. and help men understand and obviously the more we talk about things the more they can be changed and at the end of the day I also think it's really important to educate women you know uh, at the end of the day you can never control the unpredictable mm -hmm. factors if something happens how to react 
how yeah. to deal with these situations. I think it's really important to raise your daughters and raise your kids, you know, to be aware yeah. of the bad things that happen in the world yeah. so that they can protect themselves. Because at the end of the day, yes, we can educate, but we can't rely. No, on... we have to take things in our own hands, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I saw that they are like trying to like... Um, create a bracelet or some piece of jewelry where you can like press a button or at least has like a GPS. So whatever happens, they can find you. Have, have you seen that? I, no. I don't know how, how long it is, it is in development or if it's already released, but I remember seeing it. And I was like, whoa, I need to buy that That's one. really cool. Imagine you just go. Whoop. Yeah. And it's like a really like nice one. You would never think of it. To be honest. Um, also, it's really nice that nowadays you can share your location. Mm -hmm. It really gives you like a sense of safety. And to be honest, like, as a woman, we, I don't know, I tend to go out in, well, I'm also very lucky I live in Cyprus, which yeah. is quite safe. To be honest, yes. Have you ever felt unsafe in Cyprus by walking? But people also don't really walk here. Um, yeah, but you walk from a parking lot to a club. True. And I have. And, that's, I've, and those I've are had pretty, pretty very uncomfortable also. situations. But normally as a woman in Cyprus, we tend to take cars in groups. Mm hmm like if I'm going out with my best friend, Diana, yeah. I tend to pick her up or she tends to pick me up. It's also easier for parking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you avoid that walking in alone, yeah. walking around town alone kind of at night. Because I don't know, like strength comes in unity and in groups. And yes. I feel like you're less likely to be bothered if there's two, three of you than if you're alone. Mm. How crazy is it that we cannot like walk alone? It's, it's insane to think that that's normalized. It is. It's crazy. Because, you know, in Sweden, I would never walk through a park, for example. In Sweden darkness. is very unsafe with yeah. stuff like this. Yeah, I mean, there has happened a lot of scenarios. They have some very bad statistics yeah. with this stuff. Like also um, in the city center, like the, the, the streets are pretty big and wide. But still, when it's dark and it's someone, as you mentioned, walks on the other side and it's a man or like a group of men, that is very intimidating. Like, like honestly, I, I freak out. Even like if you walk on the, on, on the other side of the road and it's a group of guys walking. It, that it's is that, so sad. It is very sad. Like what, what is this world, man? Honestly, like, oh my God. Where's the, the respect for women? You know, we are the ones who raised, who gave birth to you, men. You're alive because of women, you know? Yeah, to be fair, there's a lot of men out there that know and understand and protect and respect. And they are honestly like, at the end of the day, they they can offer so much to us mm -hmm. in value. And the same goes for women. There's good women, there's bad women. Mm -hmm. There's just good people and bad people, like not to generalize. Way, we're not generalizing at all. Yeah. When we say men, we don't, we're obviously not talking about we're just, men. We're, not, we're just two women talking about some yeah. uncomfortable situations we face as women. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, I think um, the world can get better. Mm -hmm. And as long as, you know, people are talking about these things and there's uh, repercussions for horrible behaviors and, mm. um, you know, you know, you can get in trouble for doing these things, but also you're raised with knowing what's right and what's wrong yeah. and no means no and yes means yes. yes. And yes can also turn into a no and that's okay. Mm. And, you know, when you are raised more aware and it's good that people are talking more open mm -hmm. about it, like with the Me Too, not to dive into the Me Too, but like it's happening. Things are changing. Yeah. It's not the same as it was 10 years ago. A hundred percent. So I really have hope for the future. Me too. Regardless of everything that's happening. Me too. And mm. honestly, like it's scary bringing children into this world, but if we didn't have hope for the future, we wouldn't. Yeah. So, I mean, we still haven't, so maybe we don't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We'll see. <laughs> In the future. But no, I, I think it's, it's all about education. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think it's time for us to almost end the episode. But before we do that, I noticed that I have been talking about like the bakery here, the bakery that, but I never never said like... We were drinking coffee from the bakery it, in half the episode, it, it, eating yeah. food in our breaks exactly. from the bakery. In and, and again, we're saying the bakery, but I also wanted like, I'm like, oh my God, why am I not just saying go stand in this bakery? You know, like my family owns a bakery in Lacha, in Cosilla and downtown in Cosilla. And you're now renovating. Exactly. That's what I want to say. We're now renovating the one in Lacha, the main one that's been around for 30 years. Whoa. And it's going to get like this huge, cool renovation. When, when you will see it, Maria, you will be like, whoa, I'm really excited. So I think it will, it will be ready already when this episode is out. Whoa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that oh, that's fast. Mm -hmm. They're like going like fully marinos. The, my uncle, who's also the owner of the bakery, is going like full on in the motivation 
fashion production. Nice. It's, it's really cool to see. So I want to give like a recommenda- recommendation of a something that I love from the bakery. It's for you to eat. And it's the peanut butter and jelly bar. Mm. Oh, my, oh my God. Why did I not bring it here with me so you can actually try it yourself also? Yeah, I could have tried it on air oh, and so, told you what I think. That's so bad of me. I need to it bring is. it. I don't need to bring it on the next filming day. Okay. Okay. So that next, one. Peanut on the butter. next filming day, mm-hmm. I will bring. I, I want to try your favorite treats from the bakery. Exactly, and it's sugar free. It is vegan because I'm also vegan, but also the sugar free. They thing. also have non-vegan stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm t- putting the tone because I'm vegan. Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling Marino so often, make more vegan stuff. Is that one vegan? No, Olivia, it's not. Oh my god, I already have so many vegan products, but please make that one also. So yeah. So, no, you have a very nice selection of vegan products. Yeah. And also artis- artisan. It sounds like a, maybe I should say like collab, just in case. <laughs> and then go be like, Marino, Christazmo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will call him later. By the way, I mentioned you in the podcast. Now we want Pay up. <laughs> Pay up. <laughs> so that's my recommendation of the week. Nice. And I think that's that's more than enough. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the end of this episode. <laughs> this was a, a weird... It was weird getting back into it, yeah. but um, it's so fun to be back. It's nice to see you also, and outside of the WhatsApp uh, messenger. Yeah, and I'm really excited for all the upcoming episodes. Yes. And it's summer. Summer's here. Yeah, summer is almost. Well, it feels like summer is here. Okay, yeah. Uh, you never You're tanned co- also. You You've never commented tanned. how tanned I, I am. I saw you the first thing that when you walked inside, I was like, damn, she's tanned. But then you went directly to uh, drink your coffee and uh, the moment was gone. But now, uh, now I see you. you. You're very tanned, girl. I'm so tanned. And you're glowing. I see that you're glowing also. It's the summer glow. Yeah. It suits, suits us all. So, yeah. yeah we'll bye-bye. see you next week. Yeah, ciao, ciao. Thank you for listening to us and send us messages on Instagram and on TikTok and send us an email on icelatigirls at gmail.com for like dilemmas and questions. In the next episode, we're going to respond to some dilemmas. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you very much for listening and watching. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.